What's up guys, Sam Taggart here, your sales expert. And today I'm gonna to dive into what's the difference between working for a big company or a little company in sales. And I've got a lot of good little nuggets of pros and cons on this. So it's gonna be quite interesting because I've actually been at the startup meeting out of a Starbucks and I've been in the behemoth biggest in the country. So I can kind of tell you the both pros and cons, right? So I've got a ton of training on leadership, sales training, stuff like that that's gonna dive into how to sell, how to recruit, how to lead, a bunch of free videos. If you just click the link, we'll love, I'd love to give you access to more. So just click the link and let's get you set up. But I'm gonna dive into this now. You ready? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put big companies here and we're gonna go pros and cons, right? And then we're gonna go little companies here. And when I say little, I'm gonna talk like under 20, 30 sales guys. Okay, that to me is little. Um, obviously you have mid range, big. When I say big, I'm talking 500 plus sales guys. Okay, that's kind of where I'm putting my marks because some of these guys, you know, they, and, and, and every industry is gonna different is gonna differ a little bit. So let's dive into the, the pros and cons. So pros, cons, pros, cons, okay? Now, big companies, some of the big pros are obviously they've been around quite a bit, so they have a track record of success most of the time. Meaning they've been around and you can kind of count on them having a good program. Meaning in order to scale to have multiple hundreds of reps, they've duplicated themselves over and over again. So you can kind of count on a system or program that's going to help you succeed. Another one is they're gonna have the tools, most of them, and I'm not saying all of them. I've been shocked at how sad some of these big companies are with tools, but some of them have invested millions and hundreds of thousands of dollars into apps, technology, systems, CRMs, tools to make the sales process a lot easier for their salespeople to recruit and to sell better. Um, some of the cons are you're typically gonna have a little bit of less pay, and that's not all the time, but you're gonna make a little less money per sale. Um, and the reason being is because they're trying to help fund the tools, and then the leadership over here tends to be a little bit stronger because they're not spread so thin. They've got multiple levels of layers of leadership, which tends to have to be funded by this, okay? Um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I'm just saying per sale, you tend to make a little bit less. Another con over here on the big companies is you get lost in the crowd, okay? And what I mean by that is you're just a rep amongst a lot. You're a little fish in a big sea. And sometimes you don't get the love and attention unless you're really good. Um, so over here though, you could say it's more competitive. So it's gonna help you push to be more good at what you do, but that's not necessarily all the case. There's a lot of little companies that are very competitive, have very high averages, so you can get into a competitive situation over there. But you're gonna get maybe a little less TLC here, and then maybe another one is less opportunity to grow. Um, and that's not always the case, and they're gonna pitch you on this, but it's obviously there's a bigger runway with a littler company to say, I can move up to manager, they're looking for more leadership and they want to accelerate that leadership growth path over here. So we'd put leadership path maybe a little bit faster with a littler company or market ability, meaning I want to open up this market. It's not already taken over here that you actually probably have a little bit more say on where I want to go. So a little bit more market um, flexibility over here where a con you might be a little, you know, stymied on or scrunched when it comes to area. Um, a little bit more saturation when it comes to your people. Um, and here, but you also might have a little bit of a name brand. Now, you're knocking door to door. To be honest, I look at name brand doesn't really carry tons of weight. You're not looking for SEO and marketing. You're looking for me versus you. Let's make a transaction happen now. Um, so now let's go over here a little bit. So pros of a little company, you get a little bit more TLC most of the time. Now, I'm t talking generalities, I've seen the opposite in all of these, right? What I mean by that is, you might get some owner contact, you might get some upper management contact where you get to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with them, you get to go on more intimate trip or more intimate incentives that have to cater a little bit more what you do. It's maybe a little bit more family, um, a family feel, and if that's something you're going for, then this is maybe a little bit more corporate feel and they have to jump through hoops. Um, these are a lot more nimble. So in order to innovate, change, 
develop new processes and things like that tends to happen a lot faster here. But that also could be a con because there's typically constant change in little companies. You might have pays change, this change, this change, this change, which sometimes frustrates salespeople. But that's okay because if you're not changing, you're not innovating, you're not growing. So be acceptable with that, but you're gonna have to deal with some of the growing pains of littler companies. Um, another con is there might be a little bit more financial instability, not always the case. So figure out who's the owner, what's their financial backing, where's their current cash flow, profit and loss before deciding. Because if you go into a situation, I, I have many times where I worked for a company that went literally bankrupt because they were involved in a Ponzi scheme. There's no way I would have ever known that. They were actually over here in the big side and nobody got paid their back end. And it's really, it's a, it's a very disgruntling feeling when you literally don't have somebody write your check and you're just like, I worked really hard for that. So you gotta be cautious of saying, okay, where's their finances coming from and how stable they are. That still applies here. I was on this side and dealt with that. Um, but I'm just saying in generalities here. So you're nimble. Um, another couple cons is they may lack a little bit of the leadership or top performer, um, sales you know, leader. And what I mean by that is these guys, their biggest struggle is attracting that top talent. Um, and so as long as they have somebody that's like a high performing dude to follow and chase behind, that's a good indicator over here. But sometimes they just have really low averages, low numbers, which sometimes should be a turnoff, really. It's like, I wanna go follow and be led by people that are dominating. Um, so another big thing on the nimble is your voice is another big pro is you're actually heard a lot of times. If you have a suggestion on training or switching it up or incentives or whatever, you're actually a lot of times play a big part as long as you're performing. They're like, yeah, what do you think? Which to me, I love, I love the ability to kind of create and innovate and, and have my input. And that's actually why I chose this this path. Um, you tend to get a little bit higher pay. You know, you tend to get, um, they're a little bit more aggressive with their commissions to attract people. You tend to get a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more um, leeway because they're not so corporate-y. Um, so these are just a few that come to mind right off the bat. And I'm here to obviously help find a good home for you. I'm not a recruiter. I don't even have a company for you to come sell at. But the reality is, um, some people just aren't happy at their current sales job. Some people are still still stuck. Some people are trying to find a new home. Some people are trying to figure out, man, do I make a transition? Do I make a transition? Because it is a very heavily recruited industry where sometimes the grass always feels greener on the other side. My one recommendation would be the grass is green where you water it. So. I would basically make sure that you're not making a change, you're not making an emotional decision, you're making a very logical decision that isn't just based on a relationship, isn't just based on you know somebody doing a really good job at recruiting you and making you feel good. Make your decision based on factual data of a few things, okay? So this is how I would pick. This is how, this is what I would do, right? And I, and I consult and train and coach a lot of sales and, and, and leaders in this business. So. Here's how I break this down. I'd ask these three questions. So if you're getting recruited right now by either of, I'd ask these, these few questions. The first one is what was my office? Now this is where I would caution you over here. They recruit heavily on numbers that the whole company does or numbers that the region did. I would say, what is the office I'm going to work for per rep average, okay? So per rep average, meaning these 10 guys they went and all on average did this many accounts. I would say, what's the um, leader's performance? So, and this is where this hurts these guys sometimes, but it sometimes helps them. I get to go on a small company, I'm like literally side by side with the owner who's throwing down, that's huge. If I go here and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go with this manager and he did a hundred accounts when the best are doing 400 and I'm gonna go, oh my gosh, that's kind of a red flag because that's called the law of the lid. So I'm gonna say, what's the average your office? What that's indicating is how is your ability to train me? And it's a proven track record and I'd say, show me. Never just take their word for it because people can lie and it's so pathetic in this industry. So show me this, show me this. Meaning, are you living it or are you just preaching it? Because it happens here, it's like, are they sitting on a throne being like, well, you know, go work for me. It's like, no, are you living it? 
The third one is what's the training? Show me, don't no, just tell me, yeah, yeah, we'll take you out, yeah, yeah, we'll train you. Show me the path to me to be successful. You're gonna watch these videos. You're gonna shadow me for this many days. You're gonna then do this, you're gonna do this. We have the trainings these many days a week. We do in person, online, we do this, 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 and this, okay? So I'm gonna say, show me, and if they don't have a really good answer for that, I'd say red flag. We have an online university that's gonna help you if you don't have good training, and somebody over here, maybe they're a littler company, they haven't had the time, energy, money to put into it, which sometimes is a real thing. We actually have supplemented that, just so you know. The university actually is supporting all these guys a lot more than these guys sometimes. We have a lot of big clients, but it's great because it kind of universalizes, gives you, if you're ambitious and you want to invest in yourself, go buy DDU, click the link, let's get a demo going. But this is something I would ask the companies, what is it? And then the last one is what's my opportunity for growth, right? Like show me, if you were to say, I'm going to be here five years, what does this look like? And if they have a really good answer and they're like, okay, year one, we're gonna do this. Year two, we're gonna do this. Year three, this is the benchmark where I want you to be. This is how we open up new markets. This is how we've done it with this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. And they have a success track record of that and they have a good answer for this. It's gonna be much more in, like compelling for me. As I say, this guy, the leader's per ability for me to grow, he's not stymieing me, he's not stuck. He's not gonna keep me as a sales rep forever because I wanna look at this thing as if I were to do this five, 10 years, where am I at? Because what you don't wanna do is go with one company, a year later switch, a year later switch, a year later switch and become a bouncer. I've never seen bouncers make more money than those that were able to stay put for five, 10 years. Those guys have always won the race. So find a good home, stick there and say, but do your due diligence prior to making that pick. And that's how I would decide on what kind of company, whether it was this one or this one, I'm open to either one. I just wanna say, what is this? If I were to add one or two more things on here, I'd caution you on pay because everybody can manipulate how you get paid and what that looks like. I would say, we always change the numbers and figures. Most companies are working with the same budgets. Just how they spin it is always different. And then I would caution you and I would say, make sure to choose culture. And culture really is what's gonna create good results on this. But go after culture, go after people that motivate you, that are inspiring, that are fun to work with, that are gonna keep you out there hustling harder than if somebody was just like, good luck, we have no culture and we don't invest in, in, in work on that. Um, so we're here to help you I have tons of good videos and I can answer any questions. Go follow me at, at the Sam Taggart on Instagram and other platforms. But um, we'd love to help you got tons more training, but also the university could be a great option to kind of fast start your way to success. So schedule a demo today. Let's get you rolling on that.